Hi, I'm Annie Botticelli, and this is the Storyteller Forecast for Sagittarius for April 2015. Go to my website, aspiritualspark.com, or click on the link below this video to see more about my live personal coaching and to see more about my 28-day virtual coaching program, which helps you to recreate your reality, both of which are available on a sliding scale, both of which are intended to help you move through life in a more graceful, productively happy, expansive way. And while you're there, sign up for my free email newsletter. So what's going on in April? We have so much. I want to skip to a certain part, but I also want to go in order of when things are happening. But maybe I'll just be disciplined, right? Because Saturn is in our sign and we are supposed to manage that wildness that we have. So I'm going to um, keep some structure to it instead of being all over the place. I'm going to try. Okay, so let's start at the beginning of the month. Ah, before we start at the beginning of the month, let's talk about some general energetic themes. There's a very strong concentration of energy for early Sages, early birthday Sages, um, so that's like November born Sages, or people with Sag placements in early degrees of Sag. You have a big concentration of energy in your fifth house. And for the rest of us, I'm a Sag too, with many Sag placements, the rest of us, what I'm about to talk about is going to be coming, even if it doesn't start quite at the beginning of April or in April. So the fifth house is the house of love and fun and romance and kids and creativity and hobbies and games and pleasure. And whenever you have a strong concentration of energy in that house, that means those things are very much in order. So those things will find you more whether you're looking for them or not. But if you know that this is a time that you're supposed to be focusing on those things, then you can make sure that you're slating yourself to have more fun. Sages love to have fun. So most Sages, unless you have strong Capricorn placements, because this tends to temper it a little bit, but most Sages you live by fun anyway, so I don't have to tell you to have fun, but if you have been working too hard or you do have strong Capricorn placements in your chart and things can get very heavy feeling for you, then this is a time or the time after it, it's coming for you to really remember how to have fun again and how to incorporate it into your daily life. So middle and later degree Sages are going to have this huge focus on home and actually even the early degree Sages are going to but for different reasons so those same personal planets that have moved on into the fifth house for the early degree Sages those personal planets are already in the fourth house or about to be in the fourth house for the rest of the Sag placements and the fourth house is the house of home but because the solar eclipse is happening in or near the fourth house for most Sages, home and family are going to be strong theme, huge theme um, from now into the fall. Eclipses run six month cycles. So whatever news they bring, whatever stories they bring, they tend to take about six months for the story to be told. So many of you will have started to have your housing situation, pieces start to fall in place, maybe at the end of February into March maybe into April. Um, since Uranus has been affecting the fourth house still for many Sages, for some Sages, Uranus is starting to be in the fifth house, has been activating the fifth house. But for many middle to late degree Sages, we have been experiencing Uranus still ripping through the fourth house, which can cause some very unsettling things at home, in family, with housing circumstances. Many people move a lot when Uranus is moving through that placement and it takes a long time to go through there. So these are like times you look at in your life where from here to here I moved 20 times, but then I didn't a lot beforehand or after. You know, this is just kind of has that undercurrent of restlessness and unpredictability. So this solar eclipse that happened on March 20th, but is still carrying over into April, for many people is bringing a new housing situation, a new home, something new with your family, a new family member. And many of you are, are having this, some element of your work eclipsed out. So for some of you, it might be that you lose your job and you have to move, and that's why you have a new home. For some of you, it might be you wanna move, so you leave your job, so that's how it comes in. Um, and for others, this could come in the form of like, let's say you're self-employed, you start to do your work differently. So maybe up until this time, you've done things a certain way with, with your work. And then this period of time is bringing in a new, 
chapter of how you do your work. And this can be a little bit scary because if you've had something that's been successful and you've been doing it a certain way and you've been thinking about going into this different realm, but you're nervous because it's not, everything's been working fine, right? This is a time where it's very indicated to move into doing something different. So March and April are really great for launching new things, trying new things, because once we get into May, June, July, August, September, October, all those retrograde personal planets are going to be saying, go back over things, don't launch new things, go back over things. So you want to put as many things out there as possible during this period of time where it's wonderful for launching. And the solar eclipse is going to help with this. So anything in these six month increments, like if you're starting something now and it's gonna be a six month process, or maybe it will be and you don't know it, um, very strong focus on things involving work, very strong focus on things involving home. Okay, so now let's go into the um, order in the month of these notable transits. April 4th, we have the total lunar eclipse. The total lunar eclipse, lunar eclipses happen at full moons, and we know that full moons can bring excessive emotional energy, can sometimes bring drama, can bring completions and closings to things or to chapters. Um, so when we have a, an eclipse on the full moon or a full moon that has an eclipse going on at the same time, then it counts as strong as three regular full moons. So three times the drama, three times the emotions, three times the more forceful closing or ending. We say in astrology that eclipses offer non-negotiable information, non-negotiable events. So these are things that you may want to happen, and that's good because they're non-negotiable. They're things you might not want to happen, and they're non-negotiable. So this, this is the energy that's happening, and it's April 4th. So we started to feel this energy, though, as early as February. If you've been listening to my reports, I've been talking about this, and you can also go back and listen to February and March reports because the eclipses range over this big period of time that are not isolated to the day that it actually happens, but April 4th is the day it actually happens. So the reason why this eclipse is even more powerful than normal eclipses are is because it's opposing Uranus, so it's making a 180 degree angle to Uranus. Eclipses of themselves bring in sudden things, bring in non-negotiable things, bring in um, unpredictable things, but Uranus also has that kind of energy. So when you have it in a close angle that is a challenging angle, there's going to be things that seem like they're out of your control that are coming seemingly out of the blue. Now at the same time we have Pluto, which is the planet of birth and death and rebirth and transformation and regeneration and rising, the phoenix rising from the ashes. Pluto, Plutonian energy, making a 90 degree angle to both of these aspects. So if you, we have up here at the top of your chart, you've got this um, eclipsing out of this energy, right? So we have the eclipse and then 180 degrees opposite that at the bottom of your chart, you have Uranus there. Then, then you've got Pluto coming in like this, making a T-square. These are two 90 degree angles. 90 degree angles are challenging angles. So this is just like a big dog of a transit. You know that I'm always forever looking for what is positive about these nasty lineups because it's like, woo, that's really, it's a lot, it's a lot of energy. And so when I see something like this coming, then I say, wow, that's, mm, that's, that's going to be something, right? First question I ask is, what can be wonderful about this? How do we use the energy so that we can make it the best possible? And the answer to that for me is always in spiritual inner work. The more inner work we do, the more you can gracefully experience these things that are out of your say and the things that are in your say you can be more present for them. So what I see good about this transit, this lineup of transits, is that there are many situations that have been occurring in your life, or at least for many of you, one situation in your life or multiple ones where you are either enabling someone or they're enabling you or both, okay? These relationships that are parasitic, they're toxic, they're limiting each other. This particular transit has the chance to blow it out of the water. Okay, so if you write a list of 
things that people around you should be doing, but they're not, right? Then you write a list of how are you facilitating them not doing what they're supposed to be doing? How are you taking care of something for them that they need to be taken care of? How are you letting them off easy? How are you not um, enforcing something for the many different reasons why we don't do that, right? Fear usually. Then you make the changes. And many, per many a person is going to wake up during this time one morning and say, oh my God, I cannot believe that this has been going on for this long. I'm cutting it off. I'm doing something different. That is the power of this time. The eclipse is in Libra, and so Libra rules relationships. So that's why there's this huge focus on relationships. So, and the solar eclipse is in 29 degrees of Pisces. So it's Pisces energy, but it's very strongly Aries, which is me, this is you, it's yourself versus the relationship. So some element of how you've been engaging in relationship is eclipsed out. And in some cases, the actual relationship itself will be eclipsed out. Um, but for some of you, it will just be chapters or parts of this relationship or multiple relationships. And then the solar eclipse energy is coming in the form of new autonomy, new energy. So many of you are walking around exhausted. Why? A lot of it is because you're taking care of things for people who need to be taking care of these things. And if you had, even if you say, oh, well, it's not that much, maybe you've justified it and say, oh, well, it's just this amount of money or this amount of time or this amount of energy. If you had that back from all the places where you have just a little bit too much going in that direction, think about how your personal power would be proliferating. So making those decisions are, are of accountability. It's basically accountability. So now if you're very, very brave, you can also make another list of what are the things that I'm supposed to be doing that I am not doing. And this is good for you to be doing for the for um, Saturn moving through Sagittarius anyway, because you have this theme through the end of 2017 of getting more disciplined um, and showing up for things in a different way. And, the, and you'll reap the benefits, the rewards from being committed to things. So probably on many Sag's list of things they can do better is to be more committed and show up in different ways. Many Sag's, when something goes wrong, they say, okay, bye. Right. And for the person who's the Sagittarius, that's fun and easy in a lot of ways because it's like, OK, I'm not attached to that, whatever. I'm not dealing with it. Right. And there are certain aspects of detachment that are spiritually sound, but there are certain levels of detachment that are dysfunctional. And this period of time is helping you weed through the places where you are blocking intimacy and closeness that you crave and are looking for because you're not willing to show up in a different way. So then you ask the question, where is that happening? Where am I doing that? Where am I not being accountable? And then you do something different. You know, a lot of times um, I hear people getting upset about the, um, at least in this, in the United States, about more and more things becoming illegal, like people or um, cameras taking pictures of people running red lights. You know, they feel like this, you know, that government is becoming more pervasive. And that's true. Okay, why? If people weren't running red lights, why would they have to go through the expense and of dealing with installing the cameras and monitoring this? Because people are not being accountable, right? So the reason why in a holographic reality, more things come from outside of us to be nitpicking in our space is because we're not doing it ourselves. So if you find people are hassling you then there's probably some truth to what they're complaining about, even if they're if it's not completely true. That's why I say you have to be really brave to look at this because those are the things you'd rather not deal with, right? But things will go so much better for you when you ask these questions and you become more accountable. If we had a society where nobody ran red lights and people stopped at stop signs and people weren't speeding, then would we have to have those things in place? No. And that is that is the game. That is the game of life. So the more you're accountable for yourself, the less you have people hassling you because those people are representative of the universe in the hologram saying, hey, you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. Okay, so that's big story about this time. Now, this is the aspect I had wanted to skip to, but I was disciplined and waited to do it in order. April 8th, Jupiter. 
our ruler goes direct. And this is very exciting because at the same time, we still have all these planets in Aries. And so it's like what I call a sizzle fest. Sizzle fests for Sages are fun and very um, dynamic. And there's just lots of crackling vibrance going on. So whenever our ruler is sleeping, which it has been since the beginning of December, and it goes direct on April 8th, it takes a little time to start getting everything brewing, things take a back seat. So if you listened to my reports last year, you heard me say, okay, you've got this window before all this happens, do whatever you can to launch things before Jupiter goes retrograde. So if you did that, then you notice that certain things were improving over these previous months, and you've reevaluated some things, and now is the time to take the information you got from reevaluating the slowdown, etc., and then blazing forward with those things. And April 8th, we also don't have any personal planets retrograde, so it's a perfect month to put more things into motion, especially because May, June, July, August, September, October, we have personal planets retrograde, and that is not the time to launch things. You've got your golden time right now. Those months, May through October are going to be again for going backwards. Now Jupiter, your ruling planet will be going direct, but the personal planets will be retrograde. So you'll notice that you'll be having lots of opportunities and things that happen, but as far as you initiating something, your time to be initiating something is in April. Your time to be initiating something is in November and December of this year, but your time to have things come to you and then you can say yes, are through our May through October. So hopefully you understand the difference. There's going to be a lot of activity and a lot of things happening for Sages, especially because Jupiter is in for, well, at least for early Sages, it is. When Jupiter goes direct, it is in your ninth house, which is ruled, which rules, is ruled by Jupiter. Okay, so the ninth house, there's um, 12 houses in the chart. It looks like a pizza pie. And, it, and there's like little slices of pizza for the houses. Those are fields of experience we have as humans. And one of the 12 signs rules each of these 12 houses and they go in order. So Sag is the ninth sign. And so the ninth house is ruled by Sag. Now, when Jupiter is in Leo in the Sag solar chart, that means it's in the ninth house. But that's only true for early Sages. Um, for you middle to late degree Sages or middle to late birthday for Sages. You, you haven't had Jupiter going to your ninth house yet. That's coming. You felt the whispers of it, but it's coming. But this is a very um, um, wonderful, that wasn't the word I wanted. I just lost it. It's, it's a very powerful place for Jupiter to be in the house that it rules because it's just stronger and more vibrant. And the ninth house is all about teaching, learning, traveling, different countries, different cultures, different languages, broadcasting, um, getting messages out into the world, religion, spirituality, philosophy, all of the big picture questions. So all of these things are going to start to move forward and you're going to be having opportunities coming out of the woodwork and it's okay for you to say yes to those over those retrograde times. But again, just if you have to initiate something, do it in April and then store up and do it in November and December. For those of you who are middle to late degree Sag placements, and you have Jupiter still accentuating, it's, it's whispering into your ninth house, okay? But it's still accentuating your eighth house. This is the house of credit. This is the house of debt. This is the house of inheritances, sweepstakes, other people's money, collaborating with people. So you have um, some more time for you middle degree placements. You have um, less time, several more months, probably through the summer. And for you um, later degree Sag placements, you have closer to the end of the year, still of this. If you have any debt and you want to get it worked out, Jupiter is your best friend right now. You can call, you can negotiate, you can settle the debt, you can make payment plans, you can get this thing that has been hanging over you worked out. First thing you need to do is to get a credit report and get a free credit report. You can get it from freecreditreport.com. And then you can just see what you're working with. I've found many people who have been terrified of doing this find that it's not as bad as they thought it was. And then you just systematically with great discipline, right? Because Saturn wants us to do that being in our sign, go through and get this worked out. Now, the same thing goes with buying a house or getting a loan for a student loan or anything else, getting funded somehow. 
your chances of having this happen while Jupiter are in that house or having family support, family money, spousal support, um, also legal matters are very supported when Jupiter's in the eighth house and the ninth house. So all Sages are supported in legal matters as well. So if you, if you have something legal that's been pending, you'll have more luck during this period of time and more chance for resolution, regardless of how long it's been lasting. Um, and so the eighth house makes you very lucky with money. If you had been kind of living on a shoestring and you think, wow, I can't barely pay my bills. How can I even buy a house? You, because of the way a lot of these aspects are coming together, many people are going to wind up being able to buy a house that couldn't and pieces will come together. You just have to believe and you have to do your work and be disciplined and do your end of it. And don't be afraid to ask. The eighth house is also the house I call of the whatnots. They're the, the beings that are not of this dimension. So if you are into them and you're aware of them and you're interested in connecting with them, when you have Jupiter in your eighth house, your whatnots are just like really, really, really busy and ready to help you. So it's a, it's a place of great magic, a time of great expanded magic. Um, and if you don't believe in magic, then your life's not going to be very magical. But if you do believe in magic, then your life is going to be very magical. So you have extra support at this time. Okay, so April 16th, we have Pluto going retrograde in Capricorn. Um, from April 16th through September 25th is a time for internal cleaning, a time for cleanses, juice, juices, fasts, changing your diet, scrubbing out your mind, doing deep psychological modalities. It's an internal cleaning time. Pluto does really well in retrograde because Plutonian energy is by nature just in and deep. So when it's in retrograde, it's actually somewhat exalted in that space. So this is a really good time to clear out karma, clear out negative energy, clear out negative patterns. And part of this can be specifically related to what I was talking about with this enabling. You know, if you're in parasitic relationships, you're having the life sucked out of you, you have to set healthy boundaries. This is a good time to do that. Um, so April 18th, we have the new moon in Aries. You get your 10 new moon wishes. And this is, besides your birthday, the best time of the whole year to do a vision board. Vision boards are where you have a piece of poster board and you cut out clippings and magazines, um, little phrases or pictures that of things that you want to create. Let's say you don't live by the beach and you want to create being by the beach. You cut out pictures by the beach, you know, of you being there and that being your home. Whatever you're working on, you can put it on your vision board. I've heard innumerable reports of people that have made vision boards and then kind of forgotten about them, come to find them and say, oh wow, actually all this stuff happened. Some people have them out and they see it happening. You know, it happens and this day, this day is your most powerful day until your birthday to do this. So definitely, definitely, definitely take full advantage of that time. Um, there's a cluster of energy around the 21st, 22nd of April that is amazing for strategizing, getting a budget, getting a financial plan, doing things that are really grounded and really earthy. Um, there's um, Mercury in Taurus, conjunct Mars in Taurus, Mercury rules communication, um, Mars rules forward movement and action, and it's, they're all, they're trining Pluto, which is the powerhouse, you know, the nuclear generator of the cosmos and that's in a favorable angle to try. So you meeting with a, a financial advisor or learning how to do budgeting, taking a class, something like that would be awesome at that time. The end of the month, we have two beautiful aspects with Venus, which rules love and beauty and money. The first one is on the 22nd and that is a sextile, which is a favorable angle to Jupiter, which is our ruler, which we love, which expands everything and brings awesomeness. So big things for love and money and beauty at that time. Um, February or um, April 26th, we have Venus sextiling Uranus. And again, Uranus brings surprises. When it's not in a favorable angle, it often brings surprises that were like, yeah, I don't really want that surprise. But when it's in a favorable angle, it's like, yes, I want that surprise. It's like that. So April 26th, surprise things with love and beauty and money that would be really fun. Um, also, um, it's unpredictable, but it's also very refreshing you know, so that's our month. 
I would love to help you. You can go to my website, aspiritualspark.com. You can send me an email through there to see more about my personal live coaching sessions, which is available on a, they're available on a sliding scale. Also, my 28-day virtual coaching program called Shine is a wonderful way to, if you are taking Saturn and Sag seriously and want to get more disciplined and want to get more manage your fire and direct your creative faculties better, this program is awesome for you. It has daily structure of things that you have to do, and it works on the emotional, mental, physical, spiritual levels where um, you can really, really, really clear out old paradigms and old blocks. So while you're on my site, definitely sign up for my free email newsletter. You'll become part of my community, and I hope you have a wonderful month. I'll see you next month. Bye.